Welcome to worship this Sunday morning. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Don Ryder, a longtime member of the congregation, and I'm doing my best to pinch hit for Reverend Emily this morning. We'll start with a couple of brief announcements. One is getting somewhat repetitive, but it's worth repeating. We're still in a mode where masks are strongly encouraged. They're not mandatory, but strongly encouraged, so we leave it up to the individual to make decisions about masks. Uh, the second item that came to my attention, and some of you know this already, Halsey Smith took a header or a fall a couple days back, earlier in the week. He banged up his nose. They put stitches in his nose. He spent, as I understand it, one night in the hospital, and they sent him home to recuperate. So as you know, Halsey is one tough Marine, so I don't expect him to be out of uh, commission for a very long period. Before we go to joys and concerns, does anybody else have information or an announcement you want to share with everybody before we go to joys and concerns? Nothing pressing? All right. Well, let's go to joys and concerns. Does anybody have a joy or concern they would like to share with us this morning. We have one back over here for Carol. I'm the runner now. Yeah, well. Good morning. Um, I, my concern is that Sue is going off to um, advanced training tomorrow, um, and I just would like prayers for her to have an easy adjustment. And they still, we still haven't figured out what is going on with her paw, so some more prayers that they'll be able to figure that out once she's with the trainers. Thank you, okay. Did everybody hear that? Yeah, we did. Great, I'm doing my job. <laughs> and you're doing it well. Oh, thank you. Yes. Jenny? Hi, um, uh, this is the first time back to church after my surgery. <laughs> Uh, which I had in the April. And so I feel like I'm starting to get back into the regular routine. Oh. Um, <laughs> You're yeah. a rock star. You're a rock star. I just want to say that this is the first time um, back to church since I had my surgery in the uh, April. I had a rotator cuff surgery on my left shoulder. And it's good to be back into regular routine. All right. Going once, going twice on concerns. Then let us go to God in prayer for a moment. Lord, thank you for the many blessings you bestow on us on a daily basis. Give us traveling mercies for all our friends and relatives who are facing travel. And for those of our friends and relatives who may be suffering either emotional or physical challenges, give them or offer them complete healing. We pray all this in the prayer that you taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning you can find in the Red Book at 144, this is my father's world, 144 in the red book, and we're going to sing all the verses.
Let us pray as we prepare for our scriptures and sermon. Lord, open our minds and hearts as we listen and absorb. Help us to better understand your guidance and the ways in which we can better apply scriptures in our daily lives. Amen. And Jenny, let's see, Jenny's going to help us out with the scripture. This morning we're reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and a few other verses along the way in the same chapter. Now the Lord was going to take Elijah up to heaven in a windstorm, and Elijah and Elisha were leaving Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here because the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here because the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So both of them went on together. Fifty members from the group of prophets also went along, but they stood at a distance. Both Elijah and Elisha stood beside the Jordan River. Elijah then took his coat, rolled it up, and hit the water. Then the water was divided in two. Both of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, What do you want me to do for you before I'm taken away from you? Elisha said, let me have twice your spirit. Elijah said, you've made a difficult request. If you can see me when I'm taken from you, then it will be yours. If you don't see me, it won't happen. They were walking along talking when suddenly a fiery chariot and fiery horses appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went to heaven in a windstorm. Elisha was watching, and he cried out, Oh, my father, my father, Israel's chariots and its riders. When he could no longer see him, Elisha took hold of his clothes and ripped them in two. Then Elisha picked up the coat that had fallen from Elijah. He went back and stood beside the banks of the Jordan River. He took the coat that had fallen from Elijah and hit the water. He said, where is the Lord, Elijah's God? 
And when he hit the water, it divided in two. Then Elisha crossed over. Here ends the reading. So continuing the theme of our extraordinarily creative young minister to get us to step outside the box, learn to worship in new ways and try new approaches to understanding the Word of God, today's sermon is a so-called Lecto Divino or Lecto Divina. And yes, I did have to look it up to find out what that was. As best I can understand it, some of the monastic orders feel that it's not enough to read the scripture. You really have to feel the scripture. You have to internalize it and be in the moment of the scripture to really feel the word of God. So to participate in this Lecto Divino, it is partially a meditation. And we are going to begin with a few meditative steps. So let's begin with a couple of simple things. I'd like everyone to inhale, just take a pause, and exhale. And once again, inhale, pause, and exhale. Once more. Inhale and exhale. And now we're going to give some thought and attention to various parts of our body to help us relax and get in the mindset of the Lectio Divina. So let's start by concentrating on the tops of our head for just a moment. Move to your face. The throat. Now consider your chest. Be conscious of your chest. Your abdomen. Your hips. Move to your thighs. Your knees. Your calves. And your feet. Now take another deep breath and allow your attention to wash from the top of your body down to your head, and down to your feet. Three deep breaths in and out. One, two, and three. So since this is a meditative reading and we want to be inside the scripture, you can listen with your eyes closed or you can listen with your eyes open. And you'll have a couple of roles to consider as we move through this. And so as to avoid confusion, if you remember the scripture, the two prophets' names sounded terribly similar. So we're going to refer to a prophet one as Elijah and prophet two as Shasha. And again, as we go through, it's going to be interesting. You may find it more rewarding to assume one of those roles. Or in my case, I feel I can probably cross over as we move from Elijah to Shasha. Elijah, you are tired. You have been God's prophet for more years than you care to count. For most of those years, you've been directly persecuted by Queen Jezebel for trying to bring the Israelite people back to their covenant with Yahweh. Six years ago, you and the queen had an epic showdown with altars, fire, 
and murder. You proved that Yahweh is more powerful than the god Baal. Yahweh consumed your altar with fire. Baal didn't even show up. You killed many of Baal's prophets that day. Queen Jezebel was so angry, she sent folks out to kill you in your turn. You ran into the desert and you wished for death. Now, you lay down and went to sleep. When you awoke, you saw an angel with hot food and water and the promise it would sustain you for your journey. What journey, I imagine, you scoff. Haven't you heard I've had enough? You go back to sleep. When you wake again, there is more food, more water, another promise of sustenance for your journey. This time, you jump up and begin running toward God's mountain. It takes you 40 days and 40 nights to arrive there. Enough to experience a spiritual transformation of some kind. You climb the mountain and hear God's voice. Why are you here, Elijah? You reply angrily, I've been very passionate for the Lord God of heavenly forces. Before the Israelites have abandoned your covenant, they've torn down your altars, they've murdered your prophets. I'm the only one left, and now you want to take my life too? God tells you to come outside so you can see God's glory. A fire passes, a storm an earthquake, a strong wind. God is not in any of these. Instead, God is in the still, small quiet of the storm. Again, Os asks, why are you here? You say again, this time quietly, I've been very passionate for the Lord God of heavenly forces because the Israelites have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars. They've murdered your prophets. With the sword, I'm the only one left, and now you want to take my life, too? God gives you a series of instructions about appointing new kings over lands and gives you a gift. He tells you to go find Shasha and make him your prophet in training. Now, six years have passed, and Shasha has gotten extremely close with God. He even views you as a father. However, even though times with Shasha have been good, your life has been hard. You didn't even appoint the kings God assigned you to appoint. This task will fall to Shasha in the years to come. Elijah, you seem tired. Listen, now the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Shasha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Shasha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Shasha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Elijah, why do you keep trying to leave your protege behind? Listen, 50 men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as you both were standing by the Jordan. Then you took your mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When you crossed, you said to Shasha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. And Shasha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Oh, Elijah, your life has been so hard. What did it feel like knowing Shasha wants a double portion of your spirit? Your spirit has gotten you into so much trouble with Queen Jezebel. Are you honored, afraid, proud, sad? Listen, you responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I'm being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. Interesting, this sounds like a yes, but yes, you can have my spirit, but you have to do something to get it first. Why did you set stipulations? Why not just give him a double portion of your spirit? Let's back up a minute. 
Now you are Shasha, and some of you may want to make the transition or had made a decision, you are going to be inside Shasha. Shasha is young, enthusiastic. Before Elijah found you, you were a farmer plowing land with oxen. The day he called you, you slaughtered your oxen, gave a feast for the people, and left without turning back to follow Elijah. You never looked back. Over the past six years, you have seen and done miracles while following someone, Elijah, you absolutely look up to. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and you were on your way to Gilgal. Elijah said, you stay here for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel, but you said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So you went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to you, stay here for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan, but you said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of you went on. Elijah keeps asking you to leave and let him journey alone. And yet, like Ruth follows Naomi, many of you remember that passage, like Ruth follows Naomi, you refuse to turn back. Why do you follow him? How does it feel when he asks you to turn back? Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as you both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of you crossed on dry ground. When you had crossed, Elijah said, you will tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. And you said, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. When you ask for a double portion, what does it you mean? He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. And you surprised. He didn't just say, yes, what are you feeling? As he continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of you, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Shasha, is this what you expected? Uh, you knew Elijah would be returning to God today, but uh, did you know your mentor would leave like this? You kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when you could no longer see him, you grasped your clothes and tore them into pieces. Tearing your clothes is a ritual action of mourning. Well, what are you feeling now that Elijah, some of you, has ascended? You picked up the mantle of Elijah, that is Shasha, that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. You took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water saying, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When you had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other and you went over. When Elijah initially called you, he took his mantle and threw it over your shoulders. That symbolic action marked you as a prophet, Shasha, and changed your life forever. Now that mantle is yours. You instantly use it to part the waters as Elijah does when you come to this place. How are you feeling, Shasha? A lot of power, a lot of faith. Take a deep breath once again. It's time to listen to the whole scripture as yourself and in a meditative manner. This is Kings 2, 1 and 2, 6 to 14. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Shasha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Shasha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Shasha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave. 
So the two of them together went on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets also went and stood at some distance. Then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water, and the water once again was parted to one side. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Shasha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Shasha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Shasha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, Elijah had been raised up. He grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen, went back and stood on the bank of the water. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen and struck the water saying, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other. May add, God add a blessing to the reading and understanding of his word.
us prepare our hearts and minds as we receive our tithes and offerings. Next hymn is number 605 in the Red Book. That is 605, and once again, we're going to sing all the verses. seated. As we leave services today, let God's light shine on you in the coming week and carry blessings to all of us. 
I wanted to share with you something I remember one of our previous ministers saying that I think is an appropriate benediction, kind of a catchphrase. Salem Church is not a hotel for saints. Rather, it is a hospital for sinners. Let me say that again. Salem Church is not a hotel for saints. It is a hospital for sinners. I cannot speak for all of you, but I know that when I leave a service at Salem, at least for a time after service, I feel just a little more saint-like and a little less sinner-like. So I have the same wish for you as we leave church today. God bless you all. Thank you.